guys, it's Joe from PocketNow.com. You remember way back when you were a kid and uh, when you wanted to make a phone call, you actually had to pick up a phone that had like a cord on it that plugged into a wall? Well, some of you might. Others had antennas that you had to pull out really long. Well, today we've got cellular phones and smartphones. Smartphones, of course, are smarter than normal phones. And today what I would like to show you is a feature of some of the higher end smartphones and that's video calling. Or to be more precise, video chat. So let's go take a look at video chat using Kick or Quick, depending on how you want to pronounce it, between the MyTouch 4G on T-Mobile's HSPA Plus 4G network and the Sprint Epic 4G on Sprint's 4G network. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> Alright, so over here we have the T-Mobile MyTouch 4G connected to their HSPA Plus network, which should get me near 4G speeds. They haven't deployed it fully in my location, so we're just going to have uh, to trust that it's a little bit better if you're in a more populated area where they've done a full rollout of 4G. Over here we've got the uh, Sprint Samsung Epic 4G, and unfortunately 4G where I am kind of rolls in and out. So right now we're connected to 3G, we'll see what it's like. Now, why do I mention 3G, 4G? Well, first and foremost, these phones can do video calling, or video chat is a better way to, uh, to say it, over, well, not Wi-Fi. And, and I'm kind of doing that, I'm kind of mentioning that just to, uh, to poke at Apple a little bit, because on their devices, you can only video chat over Wi-Fi, not over cellular data, which is well, kind of self-defeating if you ask me, but it's a carrier thing. If your carrier doesn't have the bandwidth to be able to support video calling, which obviously takes more bandwidth than just straight audio calling, well, they're not going to want that to happen. I don't know if that's the case with AT&T or not, but uh, for the purpose of this video, we'll say that it is. And if we've got a representative from AT&T watching this video who would like to clarify that, we've got comments down below. I'm glad to receive that feedback. But let's take a look. First and foremost, each one of these phones comes with a custom version of Kick or Quick. And I'm going to make fun of it by saying it both ways for the purpose of this video, you know, because I do that kind of stuff. Now, custom versions, that's kind of goofy in my opinion. You can go out to the market, you can download this app, just search for QIK, and you can download it, use it on your phone. Now, it's not going to be all that useful if you don't have a front-facing camera. Both of these phones have a front-facing camera. T-Mobile G2, on the other hand, doesn't have a front-facing camera. That doesn't mean that you can't use it, it just means that when you're looking at the person you're talking to on the screen, they're going to be looking at whatever is on the back side of your phone. In this case, this nice high density polyethylene tabletop. Uh, if you're walking down the street, they're going to be looking at the person's back or head or whatever is walking in front of you. So keep that in mind. That's not all that this can do. Of course you can do video chat. You can also record and share your life as it happens. Now, I've mentioned this app particularly in the past. If you're ever involved in any kind of a police or security issue uh, or, or any place that you might want to get a record of what's going on, this app is great because once you have it installed and set up, you can stream that information to their website in real time so that if something were to happen, say your phone was confiscated as evidence, and I don't know, maybe the data got erased or destroyed, I know that would never happen in today's society, but if it did, you still have what happened available to you out on the website. So very nice to have an off-site copy there, and it's there just to help keep people more honest. Don't use this in any way, shape, or form that might be illegal or inappropriate or unethical. There's my disclaimer, all right? Next is you've got video mail or messages, which are basically the same thing. It's a voicemail with video on it. Doesn't get much simpler than that. And then, of course, my videos and video gallery, which, again, same thing. It's what you've already recorded, so you can watch it later, stream back down to your phone, or played from the local copy. But we're not interested in any of that. What we're interested in is video chat. Now, back to what I said. These are both custom versions of the app. What's unfortunate is... When I went out to the market to update these apps, there were updates for both of them. When I updated the Kick app for the Sprint Samsung Epic 4G, it broke. I don't know what else to say. It force closes every time you try and record a video. 
So, uh, update fail. Luckily, I was able to uninstall the updates and go back to the version that came pre-installed on the phone and everything was working again. So, there was an hour or so of my life in troubleshooting that I hope the guys at Kick are listening to and will fix. Over here on the MyTouch 4G, the version that came on the phone I never got to test because it came up and said, hey, there's an update. The update just happens to work. So, okay. Enough with the blabber, let's get right to the videos. All right, in a previous video, I showed you a little bit about, uh, or I talked a little bit about how this was probably one of the most frustrating apps that I have ever, ever, ever used. And I have spent literally hours and hours trying to get this to work. My contacts have a whole bunch of people in them. And apparently, nobody in my contacts is on the, uh, the Kick network. And I don't know why, because I know several of them are which is kind of frustrating. Second thing that's frustrating is this is a separate app that I have to launch. So I have to go in and try and uh, I have to say I want to video chat with someone to be able to video chat with someone, which is kind of lame. Instead, I'd like to open my dialer, dial somebody's number, and have it ask me, hey, do you want a video or do you want audio, and have it do the call that way. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but hopefully soon. So what I've done is I have Jessica, she's my daughter, she's in the other room, uh, again on the Sprint network and I'm over here on the T-Mobile network and we're going to go ahead and make this call. Now to do that I had to type in her username and that was kind of a pain in the neck because you might not know their username, you might just know their phone number. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and connect to my daughter who is using my wife's account. Her name is Jessica, let's see how that works. Go to recent calls and tap that. And you can hear it ringing on my end. And there it is. You can see me and the camera up in the upper left. And Jessica, can you hear me? Now, here's the funny thing that Jessica and I just learned. On the MyTouch 4G, it automatically broadcasts video and audio over to the receiving end. Is that right, Jessica? Yes, I am receiving. Okay. Now, the funny thing is, over on the uh, the Epic 4G version of uh, of the same app, it's still it's still kick or quick or however you pronounce it. You have to press and hold this little button. See that button down there in the corner? Which looks a little bit different. It, it says talk on it. And if you want to talk to the other person on the other side using the Epic 4G, you have to press and hold that and release it. Just like a walkie-talkie, which is kind of goofy. So, Jessica, I'm, I'm noticing, uh, can you hold the camera back a little bit more so we can see you and, you know, maybe smile a little bit? See, there you go. Now, how old are you, Jessica? Jessica is almost 10 years old, everybody. So, uh, you know, really nice girl. Make sure you're nice in the comments. Um, what do you think about video calling? Is, is this something that's going to replace, say, you know, picking up a phone and, and calling your friends? Yes, she says it definitely is going to do that. Um, I don't think that, uh, that this app is quite ready for mainstream. I mean, you and I have been trying to figure this out, uh, the same app on two different phones, for, uh, for how long has it been now? So we've been working for half an hour to try and get this phone to connect to your phone and uh, you and I have been practicing in the same room together, so kind of difficult. We're going to try one other thing, and this is a competing app that doesn't come pre-installed on either phone, but we're going to see how it works for both usability and, uh, and audio and video quality. So we're going to go ahead and do that here in just a minute. So Jessica, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and let you go and I will see you in just a little bit. All right, so let's try with another video calling app. In this case, it is Fring. I don't really like their interface. It, it looks not complete. I've complained about that before, but you know, it's kind of uh, kind of unique and novel. In this case, we can do a text talk, which is like instant messaging, a phone call, which is VoIP, and then a video chat. So we'll go ahead and do video, and it's dialing her up right now. Has kind of a funny ringtone. And look, there is Jessica. Jessica, can you hear me? 
Yes, she can hear me. Now, this is over HSPA Plus on my end, but uh, the, the Sprint 4G on her end just isn't working right, so it's just 3G. Now, you'll notice over here I've got a little uh, kind of a white window. Now, Jessica, can you see me? Sorta, you can just see the table, right? So that's unfortunate. What uh, what Fring has is they've got a platform that kind of works. I mean, it dials, it connects, it, it behaves just like you'd expect it to. But the MyTouch 4G isn't supported yet, so the front-facing camera doesn't work. Uh, and I'm sure they'll have an update for it, hopefully sooner than later. But Jessica, can you see me now? And yes, she can now see me, but I can't see her, so we're going to have to keep flipping the phone around like this, and that's kind of awkward. So, home run for Fring, getting this call to work just right off the bat. Something that uh, that Kit couldn't do, but unfortunately, they don't have the front-facing camera working, so um, still no positive solution in that point. But in any event, Jessica, thank you very much for being my spokesmodel for the day. All right, so there we go. It's still a little bit in its infancy, this whole video calling thing, but you can very clearly see how not to do it, and that's with this kick video chat. It, it doesn't work well at all. I don't know if that's because we're going across different networks or there are different versions of the app or or what. I, I don't really know why. It seems like a relatively simple concept to employ, but they haven't done it, and they failed miserably, at least in my experience. If your experience has been better, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. Fring, on the other hand, Fring looks like it's uh, just a, kind of a sketchy thing, that it's not done, that it's not complete, but the calls are made. Uh, we can do voice calls really easily. A little bit of a delay. Uh, obviously, I'm going uh, VoIP across my cellular data network to her cellular data network and down to her phone. Uh, and the faster that your network is, the faster that that's going to be in most cases. This is where latency really comes into play uh, and where T-Mobile's got kind of a home run here. Sprint's latency is in the hundreds of milliseconds, sometimes three and 400, whereas T-Mobile's is just, uh, you know, about 100, 90, 80, somewhere in that range. But still, kind of goofy that they can't get video chat or video calling right, and that's really what this phone is advertised to do. Please, prove me wrong. You guys have better experiences? Let me know. But, showing off what chat can and can't do, I'm Joe for PocketNow.com.